Are you on the line, Sheriff? Sure? It's like a uh, BitTorrent site. You download like movies. And yeah, I know. I know what you're talking about. BitTorrent was based on this very fundamental calculation of like, well, if you're sending out something and everyone wants the same thing, they could just send it to each other. The initial place only has to upload one copy of the whole thing and everything else will be distributed between peers and you actually get maximum efficiency. The change in the architecture of the media is completely connected to a change in the architecture of control. You know, with the broadcast system, you have one person in one station deciding what gets put over the airwaves. When you have a distributed network like the internet, everybody can be a server. There's no distinction between the broadcaster and the receiver. The arc of digital technology has been to empower individuals, to empower end users, fans, customers, consumers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, traditionally in copyright law, the targets, the people you've put pressure on, uh, if you're a copyright owner, have been intermediaries, uh, people who print books, people who duplicate video cassettes, people who make records. Uh, it used to take a lot of uh, expensive equipment to do that. So as a copyright owner, if you could crack down on the people who have the record pressing facilities, you more or less have taken care of your problem. Well, of course, digital technology is rapidly changing that. The network is a copy machine, right? Every single time you do something on your computer, it makes a copy. First it copies it into your computer's memory, then it copies it to your computer's CPU, then it copies it out you know, to the network, and every step along the way from you to the person you're talking to, it makes another copy. The entire system works because it's digital and because copies are free. Everything works by making copies on a computer. You know, you're not gonna stop that. We live in a world now where each of us has the ability to make records, to press records, to share records, to transmit records, uh, music to everyone uh, in the world. Now that doesn't mean that music isn't getting produced, quite the contrary. Tons of music is getting produced and lots of people who would otherwise have trouble uh, reaching an audience uh, to mu via their music can. A lot of people who own content or who control content or who are gatekeepers to, to content are freaked out about giving things away and our experience has been to them very counterintuitive to us quite fulfilling what we found after we put all this material up online and we put up all our good stuff the stuff that we knew people wanted is that our sales went up property is looking backwards towards a, a, a physical world in which physical barriers enabled people to exclude others and to and to to control distribution we need other means of controlling distribution and and, and of rewarding people who create innovations people who create cultural production should be able to make a living. The thing to remember is that the recording industry has perfected the art of extracting all of the value from the CDs and, and earlier the, the records to itself as the marketer and externalizing almost all of the costs and the risk onto the creators. And so in that system, when you suddenly take out the CD, the artists lose relatively little, the recording industry lose, loses a lot. New artists know that they don't want to get signed. <laughs> They've read the various essays talking about what an incredibly bad deal getting signed can really wind up being. Uh, and they have their music themselves and they're distributing it online. Hollywood has um, retained control over a significant uh, portion of the revenues from public performance. A, a musician's performance um, has, is what funds musicians. And the recording industry hasn't captured that because they were f focusing on the CD. That's not the same with theater distribution of film. More than half of the revenues of uh, film come from public performance. That's not going away. I can envision a world in which you have a peer-to-peer -peer distribution of cinema and of music and in which it's, there's a lot of piracy and in which people do pay creators. Maybe not everyone pays. That might be a world in which you don't have megastars making billions of dollars, but maybe you'll have hundreds of thousands of garage bands who are able to make a living from their 4,000 fans each 
and quit their day jobs. Is that a richer world in which we have more people making music? Maybe they're not making as much money. Maybe we've eliminated these mega distribution companies in between the creators of music and, and, and the fans. You know, how will I be able to find the stuff I'm interested in, the stuff that's trustworthy and reliable? A lot of what you like depends on what other people like, right? There are only so many shows out there. They're all kind of bland, and so what happens is you have these mega hits like American Idol or Lost, where you know everybody at the water cooler is talking about this show, and so you just have to watch it. And putting stuff on the internet doesn't change that. You still care about what your friends like. You still want to read what everybody else is talking about. You still want to view what's popular because you think maybe other people have a valid opinion or maybe you want to talk to them about it. Maybe you want to join part of this community. So it's possible that we'll see a contraction of the video creation industry. Well, possible. it's possible that we'll see some displacement from relatively high production value blockbusters that then can be replicated uh, through multiple media to a few of those based on theater uh, uh, appropriation and a bit more of smaller scale amateur video production and people will, will spend more of their time this way. But again, it's not the end of film. It might be a contraction of the Hollywood model. It might be an increase in the efficacy of the publicly supported model. Um, but in that industry too, it's far from uh, doomsday. I don't think anyone other than the shareholders of those companies particularly care about the, how those industries survive. Do we really care about buggy whip manufacturers or um, whalebone corsets anymore? Innovations have come along that have made those, those things irrelevant. What we really care about is a, a broad and rich and robust distribution of culture and some kind of incentive for its creation. The efforts to stem uh, music fans, movie fans, making copies of the things they love, uh, those efforts really haven't been very successful. One of the things that intrigues me tremendously about the proliferation of material that's out there in the world for people to grab is the potential creation of millions of new authors. Um, and, you know, the consequent breakdown of that sort of, you know, long-lasting barrier between consumers and producers. This is a rich and exciting time to be alive, and it's precisely because of cultural proliferation and the absence of rules, the absence of permission. Um, I don't think that's going to go away, even if it's, you know, a million blackboards scratched with a, a rock, you know, when the electricity goes off. I don't think that's going to go away.